Today we're speaking with Dr. Klaus Pantel, Director of the Institute of Tumor Biology, University Medical Center, Hamburg-Eppendorf. He received the 2010 AACR Outstanding Investigator Award for Breast Cancer Research, funded by Susan G. Komen for The Cure. Thank you for joining us. You found that micrometastasis can be present very early in the development of cancer. How does this go against the thought that metastasis happens at a later stage in disease progression? And what also does it mean for treatment? Yeah, I think we applied very, very sensitive method to detect tumor cells that have left the primary tumor in the blood circulation and in the bone marrow as one of the primary sites of metastasis. And we could really show that these cells are already there in patients with very small primary tumors. So indicating that the tumor cell dissemination process is really an early event and not a very late one. And that has really profound consequences for therapy because it means really that we have to apply systemic therapy early in the disease uh, of breast cancer and not too late. And that we can also really now characterize these disseminated tumor cells and see what kind of therapeutic targets are expressed on these cells and how can we eliminate these cells. And I think these technologies give us now really a hand to detect these cells, characterize them, and then find the best therapies to eliminate these cells. Uh, what is the difference between circulating tumor cells and those that are present in the bone marrow? Well, the cells that are still in the blood circulation, they may go to different sites. They may go to bone marrow, they may go to the liver, they may go to the brain, uh, but they're still in transit. And they really have to pass through several selective mechanisms. They have to home to an organ. They have to invade that organ. And the cells that are in bone marrow have already uh, succeeded all these steps. They are now in the bone marrow. They are present in that organ. And they can be there for many, many years. Uh, so I think the cells in the bone marrow, in a certain way, have already passed more steps towards the process of developing a full-blown metastasis. You found that there may be dormant tumor cells in bone marrow that are resistant to chemotherapy. How can this information help us come up with new therapeutics? Yeah, we could actually uh, analyze these tumor cells and we could show that most of them are non-proliferating and they are also present after chemotherapy. So that really indicates their resistance. And I think we are now really looking at uh, new therapeutic targets like the HER2 oncogene and, and other new targets where molecular therapies are really available. And these molecular therapies can now be actually used in these patients that have these chemotherapy-resistant cells. And also, in addition to that, we can further molecularly analyze the cells and really ask what is the cause for this resistance. And that molecular characterization will give us very deep insights into potential resistance mechanisms. And if we can counteract these resistance mechanisms, then these cells may become sensitive to therapy again. Would you describe how our ability to identify cancer micrometastasis in circulating tumor cells has the potential to change practice on how cancers are detected, monitored, and treated? Yeah, I think that there is the big hope that this early detection of tumor cells in the circulation can be used to obtain very early prognostic information, but also predictive information which patients will really profit uh, the best from systemic therapies. And then we can also use the blood test to monitor therapies, which means we take a blood test before, during, and after therapy, and we can really look in individual patients whether a therapy has worked or not. And that's not possible today. Today we give therapies based upon risk indices. You know, the patients have a certain risk group, but we don't know individually whether the therapy has worked in a patient. So the patient gets a half a year of chemotherapy, and after this period we cannot say whether the therapy has worked in this individual patient. And these blood tests really have the potential to provide that essential information. And at the end, there might be something like a glucose blood test that is used in diabetes. We may have some blood tests also in oncology that tells us how can we tailor therapies in individual patients. Dr. Pantel, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you.